good morning, Parkville Presbyterian Church. We gather as God's people and we have a call and response on this fourth Sunday of Advent. We yearn for love. And so we have been traveling through these yearnings uh, this uh, Advent season and we have arrived at the fourth Sunday of Advent and we are so glad you are with us today. Uh, there's not going to be a lot going on here at the church this week, but uh, if you want to see what is going on, it's all on the back of the bulletin. And of course, this evening, we will have our Christmas Eve service at 530. You're welcome to come back and see sort of the culmination of all of our yearnings. And then the office will be uh, closed tomorrow, as will the PLC. We are receiving the Christmas Joy Offering, which, which helps, supports, helps to support our Presbyterian schools and also our retired uh, pastors, uh, some of whom you know, worked in the mission field, in overseas, and sometimes need a little extra help uh, in, um, in their lives. So that's a wonderful way to support them. Let me see, uh, we have these lovely friendship pads in the pews, so if you would pass those down and uh, let us know that you're here. And if you don't think we have your contact information, we would love to have that. And I think that's about all that I have. Are there any other announcements? Oh, yes. There is a, and it didn't get into the uh, bulletin because the, the entertainment happened a little uh, later on this week and we printed bulletin out very early. Uh, Parkville Living Center has its once a month break time community dinner. It'll be this Friday and actually, Steve, I'm gonna have you uh, share uh, the fun stuff that's gonna happen with that particular break time. We, um, the little big band is the swing band that I play in and we had our New Year's Eve gig canceled so we were just dying to play somewhere this coming weekend. And uh, it turns out that Marcus's break time coincided with an opportunity. So our little big band will be downstairs in Whipple Hall. We'll play from 6.30 to 8. And if you've never heard us or if you've never been to one of these things, it's a lot of fun. Great, great fun dancing. Uh, music that covers probably four or five decades. I don't know what he's going to pick yet. but. Uh, We'll have a good time. So if you can make it, come on out and bring your dancing shoes. Friday night. Yeah, that'll be great. Any other announcements? Then let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. <laughs> Please remain seated and open your hymnals to number 85, and we're going to sing the fourth verse of Light One Candle to Watch for Messiah.
We are a people yearning for love, out of love for each other and for God. Mary and Joseph took a leap of love. As we seek to embody God's love through Jesus Christ, we now light the candle of love. And now please rise in body or spirit and let us sing number 105, People Look East. You may be seated. In a world that seems in conflict, let us confess our inward conflicts, first silently and then together as the body of believers. Let us pray. And let us pray together. Dear God, humility is hard for us. So is obedience. But we want to be blessed. We want you to find us honorable. We don't know what you will ask us to do. But give us the faith to believe your word and the courage to play our part in your plans. Let us make Mary and Joseph our models. Amen. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us pass the peace of Christ to each other.
Let us pray. O oh God, at this time each year, we remind ourselves that you have come and continue to come in our lives. You surprise us in so many ways. Surprise us again with your word. Amen. Our first gospel lesson from Matthew chapter 1, verses 18 through 25, is the first part of a two-part story. Both of these stories involve angels visiting someone who is engaged to someone else. Let's listen to part one as the angel visits Joseph. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had borne a son, and he named him Jesus. Holy wisdom, holy words. Thanks be to God.
Well, I'd like to invite all the kids to come and join me. And we're going we're gonna to move these out of the way just for a little bit. Come on over. Hi there. I'm so glad you guys are here today. I don't know what it means, but are you ready for Christmas? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what if Jesus comes and says, hey, we got to go do something. Okay. okay. Yeah, good. That's, that's kind of what I say to Jesus if he says to me, we got to go do something, Krista. Okay. Well, you know what we're going to do is we have been, all four Sundays of Advent, we have been setting our table because tonight we're going to celebrate communion again. But have you noticed uh, that each week the cloth has gotten a little lighter? It was a really dark blue the first Sunday and then kind of a dark purple. And then last week we had this kind of combination of light blue and purple and today we're going to set another cloth on it because we're just going from the dark colors to the lighter colors and then tonight when we celebrate Christmas Eve and the coming of Jesus we will have it all in very very light light bright kind of like the lights there and it's just been how we've been moving closer and closer. So each week you all have been um, helping me set the table and we've also been adding our, our communion set. So are you guys ready to help me set the table again? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna have to take these pieces off. I'm gonna put them over here. And then we're all gonna have to go in and bring out the uh, cloth that's going to go on top and then a fourth thing that's going to go on here. So are you ready to go? All right. Here we go into the secret room. All right. Okay, everybody's going to take an edge here. All right, you got that edge? You want to take that edge? Okay, and then you want to take this edge right there. And then Henry, you and I will take the back edges. Here's one edge, and there's the other edge. Okay. Okay, can we walk out that way? Whoop. Oh, hang on. Here we go. All right, let's go that way. All right. Okay, well, we're not quite ready to put it there. We're going to put it over here on the table. Okay, so let's see if we can walk over here to the table. This is good practice for when mommy asks you to set the table. It's coming soon, like next week, right? Because you've had so much practice. Okay, all right, let, yeah, that's good. Uh, all right. That's a really good technique. That looks kind of like my technique. All right, I think we'll... <laughs> All right. Um, okay. I'm not... Yeah, let's, uh, let's see here. Yeah, this is why I don't do this at home either. Okay, I think we got it over here. Oops. Now, this is not good, okay? So we're going to have to flip this whole thing around, Henry. Come on. Let's do a big flip. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Flip! All right. And then one, two, three, back. There we go. Hey. Yeah. Boy, it doesn't take much to entertain you guys. <laughs> All right. So now we have our last color. You see how it's just gotten, it's moved through the blues. Now, we're missing some things on the table, don't we? So now we got to come over here and pick up all of our things. All right, can you carry that? Nope. Okay, can you carry this? Nope. Oh, you want the plate. Okay, that's right. 
That's good. You want the candle? Okay. All right. And I'll take this. Very cool. All right. Well, let's see. Okay, so we're going to put that over here and that over here and that over here. These are But look what's extra. It's a candle. And it's to light the candles tonight. That'll be fun. But not everybody's going to be able to be here tonight because I know there's lots of family gatherings and stuff like that. So I have a gift for all the kids who come either tonight or today. And I think you all have a family gathering tonight. Is that right? Okay. So I'd like, Erin, are you going to be here tonight? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Then you all get to pick out a gift from the gifts here today which are under the table and I'll try to get to them without pulling all the tablecloths off all righty very cool so we have these lit you can have one one or from here or from here now these are little bears and they say G uh, jingle joy for Jesus. And then this says, Jesus is the light of Christmas, and it actually turns on. So you can have the necklace that lights up. It says, Jesus is the light of Christmas. Or you can have one of the jingle joy bears. Jingle with joy for Jesus. So what would you like to have? All right. Oh, everybody's going for the necklaces. Or do you want a bear? You want a necklace. All right. I can, I can tell where things are going to go tonight. That's for sure. You know how to turn it on? See, you push the little button on the back and it'll turn on. All right. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful Christmas. But before you go, we have to say hello to our online worshipers. So let's go over here where the cameras are. And let's say hello, online worshipers. Hello, online worshipers. And Sarah, do your thing. <laughs> All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful Christmas. Thank you for coming and helping me set the table. And remember that Jesus is the one who brings us the joy. All right. Take care. The Lord be with you. You have gifted me again uh, some time off, and I will not be here next Sunday. The Reverend Caroline Barnett will be here. And Caroline, Caroline and I go back uh, several years when she was in seminary and was under the care of our presbytery, and I was on the Commission on Preparation for Ministry, which helps seminarians kind of move through the process towards becoming a pastor, I was Caroline's liaison. And so I'm just so proud of her. She has had, uh, she had a wonderful sort of seminary experience and she was ordained in uh, the late, I think late 2019 or early 2020, served as a campus pastor at, uh, at the University of Auburn and at the same time, associate pastor at First Presbyterian Church of Auburn. Uh, but she decided to come back to Kansas City, felt that uh, she needed to uh, come back here, uh, which is home and her family, and seek where God is leading her next. And we were able to snatch her up to preach here next Sunday. So uh, enjoy um, a very, very talented uh, pastor who will be with you uh, next week. Uh, one of the things that <clears throat> I think we forget sometimes when we read the backstories of Matthew and Luke that precede the nativity stories, we heard Matthew's backstory, uh, Carol read a little earlier. One of the things that we forget, I think, is the work of the Holy Spirit. 
Now, I know that the Holy Spirit is to some a kind of ethereal reality, very much like Jesus' description of the Spirit in John chapter 3, when Jesus says, the wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. For others, the Holy Spirit is a very concrete person of the Trinity. And that person for some is masculine and for others is feminine. I lean a little bit toward the feminine just because there is more evidence for a feminine understanding of the spirit in the original languages of the Bible, in the, in the Greek and the Hebrew. Uh, more evidence for that than there is for um, the spirit to be masculine. But it doesn't really matter because the Holy Spirit is meant to be in us. And that's what's going on in the nativity stories. Now, Carol read the Matthew story just now. And in the form of an angel, Joseph listens to the spirit in him and makes a decision to not only not end his engagement to Mary, but he goes all in as a father and a husband. And then there's Luke. And here are some Greek phrases that um, include the English version of the Holy Spirit. Pneumati, which means spirit. Pneumatos, hagio, which means with the Holy Spirit. Pneuma hagion, the Holy Spirit. Some version of those Greek words for spirit show up 10 times in the first two chapters of Luke. The Holy Spirit is working hard in these nativity stories, and the Holy Spirit is also working hard in our lives. If we will let her in, or him in, or it in, spirit, pneuma. And the Holy Spirit is working hard in the text that we are about to hear. And it's all about yearning for love. So let's listen to the story of how God, through the angel Gabriel, asked a young woman to be willing to do an incredible thing. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, Miriam in Hebrew. And the spirit, the angel came to Miriam and said, greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, how can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you, and therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. 
And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Hmm. <clears throat> well, here's a poem for you. This is the irrational season when love blooms bright and wild. Had Mary been filled with reason, there'd have been no room for the child. That's a poem by Madeline Lingle about this story. I don't know if you've ever given it much thought, but how do you imagine the mind and the heart of a young woman who is probably 14, 15 years old, that was about the age when young girls became engaged in the ancient Hebrew community of the first century. How do you imagine this incredible experience of an angel, a messenger, which is the definition of an angel, and what the angel has to say, you, Mary, you will carry the Son of the Most High, the Lord God, how could she have processed that? Now, I have to admit that the Christian tradition has gotten itself into a lot of interesting and sometimes silly talk over the centuries about Mary's virginity. And in fact, here's a joke. A pastor was addressing the children during the Christmas service. Who is the mother of Jesus, he asked them. And without hesitation... Dozens of tiny voices chorused back, Mary, that's right. Now, who can tell me who is the father of Jesus? And there was quiet and fidgeting. After all, no one had told them there was going to be a quiz. Then a young girl spoke up with assurance and boldly announced, It's Verge. There were several seconds of silence, and then she said, you know, Jesus' parents, Virgin Mary. <laughs> Friends, I don't believe that Mary's virginity is at the heart of the story in either Matthew or Luke. The heart of the story is about two people, Joseph and Mary, saying yes. And it's yes to love for God and for each other. Because who knows how many other young women or young men God had asked before someone said yes. Mary and Joseph had to say yes before it could happen. They had to love God in such a way and love each other in such a way that they could do this. God doesn't force us into doing things. That's, that's not God's way. God asks, and if we say no, God will likely move on, maybe ask us later, but God doesn't force. That's not God's character. We get to choose to be in this relationship, and we get to choose to respond to God's request, and that's what Joseph and Mary did. And God was with them. Nomutos hagio. When we were looking at these stories in our Advent study of John August Swanson's paintings of the Nativity, it was suggested in one of the classes that Joseph and Mary really are the power couple of the Bible. If you want a definition of power couple, skip the celebrities, the political couples, or the sports figures. Mary and Joseph are the real power couple. They are folk who really have no status in society. They are folk who are ordinary Jews trying to navigate 
the pretty rough world of the Roman Empire and Herod's murderous tendencies. And they are a power couple who demonstrate not only the yearning for love in their yes to God, but in their yearning for love for each other. And so as we arrive at the end of this Advent season, my question for you to ponder is what have been your yearnings for hope, for peace, for joy, and for love? I want to encourage you in these next days, weeks, as each of us looks to a new year and as our congregation looks to a new year in which we will be relying on the Holy Spirit to lead our transition, to ask yourself a question. Ponder it. Reflect on it. What is the yes God is seeking from you? Now, I don't think that is an easy question. I struggle with it. Is God asking you to say yes to a new ministry in your life? Is God asking you to say yes to a new relationship, to a new spiritual practice? Is God asking you to hear new ideas or new ways of thinking? Is God asking you to try a new vocation, a new location, a new direction? And while you are pondering that question for yourself, Don't forget our congregation. To what is God asking us to say yes? What will be our yes in 2024? Let's hold each other accountable to asking each other this question. Ask it of the session, the governing body of this church. Ask it of the transition team who will be designing our transition process. Ask it of each other. Are we willing to hear God's request of us? Are we willing to walk with the Numa Hagian? A Lutheran pastor created a litany based on Mary's yes, Mary's willingness. And I want to have, uh, invite you to respond to that litany. And your response is going to be the same as Mary's. Here am I the servant of the Lord. Try it with me. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. The next few days are going to be ones of celebration. They are also going to be filled with stress. What a great time to say every morning, here am I, the servant of the Lord. How about when you are traveling to visit relatives and the kids are in the back seat bickering with each other? Who has not experienced that? Uh, about who has the most room? What a, great t- what a great time to say, here am I, the servant of the Lord. Very late Christmas Eve, <coughs> when the presents aren't yet wrapped and the some assembly required gifts come in a bag filled with 200 pieces lol dollhouse from two years ago what a great time to say here am i servant of the lord back at work when your boss or your employees are cutting corners and you are feeling pressure to behave unethically what a great time to say Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Back at school, when perhaps others make fun of you because you aren't dressed in the perfect style or someone pushes you to do something you don't believe in, what a great time to say, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Out in the community, when people show disregard for the homeless, or disdain for immigrants, or distrust toward people of different beliefs. What a great time to say, here am I, the servant of the Lord. You can say it out of habit, you can say it for comfort, you can say it as a way 
to enter into a connection with God. You can say it as a prayer to help you do the things that you know God wants you to do. Any time can be a great time to say, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. May our yearnings for love be then a response to God. Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let's pray. Gracious God, thank you for leading us through this Advent season on this journey of yearning for hope and peace and joy and love. You have blessed us in so many ways. The blessing of the children last week, which was just so beautiful. The blessing of the music, the blessing of our liturgists and our candle lighters, the blessing of your stories. They have all brought us together to this place that we prepare now for the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ and what that means for each of our lives. So we thank you for this Advent season and may we continue to feel that blessing of you upon us and our congregation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to stand uh, in body and or in spirit and let us sing Love Has Come. may be seated. <clears throat> now is the time we worship God with our tithes, our offerings, and any of your written prayers. If you want to write a prayer, we have green cards to write your prayer down, but we'll also collect your prayers verbally after the offering. So let us continue our worship, and if you uh, want to uh, make an offering to the joy offering, today is the day.
Bless these gifts, gracious God, and bless the work that the joy offering assists with, with our schools and colleges and with our retired ministers. May all that we do uh, with these gifts be blessed by you and continue to share the good news of your love for us in Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Well, now's the time for us to collect any prayer joys or prayer concerns that you have. And I'm going to start from the back, and I've got microphone one. Anything going on back here that you want to pray for? For all those traveling over the holidays. Yes. Yeah. Lord, in your mercy. In your mercy. I would ask for prayers for my sister-in-law, Susan Allen, who is in the hospital and she's having some kidney issues and they're going to do a, bi a biopsy on Tuesday, I think. Lord, in your mercy. Um, I'm just so grateful for the ways that God allows us to carry forth traditions and start new ones. and for the story to be told, even in new things, too. Amen. Lord, in your mercy. Continued prayers for the Tikolsti family, learning that Roger had a stroke, and Teddy and, oh, gosh, I just forgot her brother's name. Toby, thank you. Um, and all of their families as they deal with what's going to happen next and how to help him, and just prayers for his well-being and whatever God's got in plan because it's a tough time of year to have that going. But, you know, it's a celebrating time, too, so. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, I'd like to pray for everyone who has to work while so many of us have this time off, including pastors. <laughs> so watch over them and have them a peaceful holiday as well. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, prayers for my daughter who is going to be having a liver biopsy next week. So prayers that the, they'll, God will watch over her as she goes through that procedure. Lord, in your mercy. I'd like to welcome your prayers for uh, friends of mine, Stephanie and Vince. Um, Vince, a uh, beautiful father of two elementary and middle school age kids and used to teach uh, and taught uh, and was a wrestling coach, but uh, he's had multiple health issues and he's back at KU. They were hoping he'd be home for Christmas, but he's back at KU Medical Center. So I just love that family and they live in St. Joe and just ask you to lift prayers for Vince and his family. Lord, in your mercy. Prayers for my friend Lauren, who recently lost her father to suicide um, in this time of Christmas, which is a time for family, and it's going to be new and different for them. Yeah, it's hard. Lord, in your mercy. I want to offer a joy of thanksgiving uh, for Susan Heim Davis' life and ministry as she led a service of worship yesterday for her fellow residents at the rehab center. Lord, in your mercy. Um, prayers for the family. A friend of mine, um, Gwen, her husband's father, they traveled here um, from another country and he had a heart attack. And so, the, um, you know, her husband is in 
the Northeast with his dad and she's home with the young ones having Christmas apart and hoping mm -hmm. for the very best. So for the um, John Francois family. Lord, in your mercy. And we continue to lift up the places in our world that are this Christmas Eve still at war, including the Gaza and Israel, Ukraine, and other places that are just struggling to come to a place of peace. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we gather up all these prayers and we offer them to you. And we know that what you ask us to do is to continue to pray and to listen and to share and to be open and to serve you. And so out of the yearning we have for your love and hope and peace and joy, we respond as uh, we are your servants and may we continue to say yes to all that you ask us to do. And when we're not quite sure how to pray, we are glad to have this prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, I invite you to stand in body and or spirit and let us sing the first four verses of the first Noel. The last two are for the latter part of the story. We'll just do the four that pertain to us today. Let's stand and sing.
Well, we have moved from hope to peace to joy to love, and now we move toward Bethlehem. Take your yearnings with you, say your yes to God, and know that God wraps you in God's loving arms. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you. Alleluia. Amen.